The pain Stephanie Broward has endured defies description. When New Zealand's White Island volcano erupted in December 2019, she suffered horrific burns. Since then, she's had dozens of excruciating surgeries and skin grafts. But for the 26-year-old, the greatest agony has been the loss of her dad and sister who were killed in the disaster. Throughout this awful time, though, Steph has always tried to be optimistic. And tonight, she wants to share a moment of triumph. That never-ending reminder of her injuries, the uncomfortable compression suits and masks she's had to be wrapped up in, are coming off. You're about to see why, inside and out, Stephanie Browett is truly beautiful. It's time to just get myself out there and feel comfortable with myself all over again. Shopping means so much more than glamorous stores and designer brands for Stephanie Browett. It's a long-awaited chance to express who she is and how far she's come. So this is sort of the first time that you were able to properly shop with no inhibitions? Yes, it is. It's the first time I'm able to shop for things that I would normally wear mm -hmm. before I was burnt. Steph has worn this compression face mask for two and a half years. I think I might stick to suede. Yeah, I like suede too. Yeah, there's something about it. It's just nice. It feels it's painful. the last of several bandages helping her skin heal from life-threatening burns. I felt quite restricted because they were very tight, uncomfortable and painful. Um, they actually caused quite a lot of bad days and tears because I hated them that much. Yeah. I think they the length is good. Yeah, the length is good. It's right below the knee. She's finally ready to take off her mask and make the most of her remarkable recovery. So you're stepping into your new phase of life in a new pair of boots. How yeah. cool is that? <laughs> I am. I'm starting fresh. Yeah. A new chapter Steph can't quite it's believe freaking. is finally here. <laughs> Always. <laughs> So this is it, Steph. It is. <laughs> the last time you'll need to wear your mask. I know. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah? Yeah, it is. It's been a long time. It's felt like forever. Mm. And as though this day would never come. And now that it's here? It's emotional and scary. <laughs> uh, it's actually quite daunting as much as it is exciting. It's a moment years in the making. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is me. <laughs> this is you. Incredible you. Yeah. When you look in the mirror now, what do you see? I see a person who has gone through so much more than I ever expected to go through in life. Um, I see a very tormented person. As much as this is exciting, it's been a long, hard journey to get here. And I definitely think I'm tougher than I ever thought I would be. I think I've learned that the fight for survival is a real thing. I was literally fighting every day to survive, to just get back to being myself. And I never knew that I had this in me. It's a huge milestone for Steph, but it also reminds her of who she's missing, her dad Paul and sister Crystal. I do wish my dad and sister were still alive and still with me and that they could be here for this moment. And I just hope that I have made them proud of who I've become over the past few years. 
I think there's no doubt about that. Yeah. That's all I can wish for. This is the last happy image of Steph with her younger sister and their dad on a day trip to New Zealand's White Island during a family cruise in December 2019. They had no idea, just seven minutes later, the volcano would erupt, killing 22 people, including Paul and Crystal. We just started seeing black smoke coming out of the crater. Steph first told 60 Minutes of that harrowing afternoon when we sat down together in 2020. And then only a few seconds later, we heard the front tour guide scream run, and that's when we realised, crap. You know, just a split second decision to just bolt. And you could hear it coming from behind and getting louder and louder as it was coming closer. And you could hear all the rocks. You could hear the sound of all the rocks hitting the ground and people just screaming. I didn't think I would survive. I thought I was going to die. Holy shit. Crystal's phone captured their panic as they ran for their lives. While tourists on another boat leaving the island watched in horror. My whole body was being shoved and pushed and rolled onto the ground. I was just hitting things while getting burnt at the same time. It was the most terrifying moment of my life. Unforgettable images for us all, but especially for Steph. As much as I wish that day would leave me, it has caused me many sleepless nights, many nightmares. There have been many times where my mind won't shut off even when I wish it would. Even now? Even now. Yeah, it hurts a lot. Steph was rescued by local helicopter pilots and three days later transferred to the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, where she lay in a coma for three weeks. Do you remember the first time you saw Stephanie Browett? Yes, she was bandaged from her head to her feet. In more than 40 years as a burn specialist, Dr Heather Cleland had never seen a patient like Steph. I'd never treated anyone who had been injured in a volcanic eruption. Um, she had um, severe burns affecting um, a very large proportion of her body, about 70% of the total body surface area. So really, this is an injury that um, many people would, would succumb to. So there was a real risk that Steph may not have survived these injuries? Oh, yes, a, a very high risk of um, not surviving. They're confronting to look at. But these images show how badly Steph was hurt. Her body stood little chance against the intense steam and toxic gas spewing from the volcano. The once bright and bubbly 23-year-old was suddenly unrecognisable, wrapped up in all these bandages. Do you remember the moment you woke up for the first time after the eruption? I do in bits and pieces. I was full of tubes and surrounded by medical equipment and in a very small room with lots of noises. Those things will always stay with me. I don't think they'll ever leave. It's just things you don't forget. As the months passed, Steph pushed through excruciating pain and stunned everyone with her extraordinary progress, even surprising herself. I think at times, early on, I thought my future was pretty bleak. And it was quite scary. Because you had to start from scratch, didn't you? I did. I had to start from scratch like a baby. Sitting upright, getting out of bed, taking 
my first few steps, even feeding myself, I had to relearn all of those skills from scratch and they didn't come easy at all. It was incredibly difficult. There must have been times along that journey where you just thought, you know what, I don't want to do this today. There have been plenty of moments where I've wanted to give up or I've just been in tears, not wanting to do anything, but I do feel as though I've come a long way from day one. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Heather. How are you going? Reaching this Good. point <laughs> hasn't been easy for her doctors either. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting her wounds to heal has taken dozens of operations. And there are more to come to try to reduce tight and painful scarring. Though it's a challenge medically, caring for a patient as resilient and determined as Steph has also been an absolute pleasure. Can you believe the progress that Steph has made when you look at her today? Yep. Compared to the Steph you saw two and a half years ago? Look, she's, she's a remarkable young woman and I think she is also a great inspiration, I suspect, for a lot of people who've had significant burn injuries. Um, it is important to see that um, you know, this kind of recovery after such a horrific injury is possible and that, you know, there is a life after um, an absolutely catastrophic burn injury. For all her triumphs, Steph still has a huge fight ahead of her, not just recovering, but in the courtroom too, taking on the cruise liner that she says failed her family in the most devastating way. The real negligence in this case, it didn't happen in New Zealand, it didn't happen on White Island, it happened in downtown Miami, where the risk management department had the opportunity to say, you know what, we know something about White Island that you may not, and that is that it's a ticking time bomb, that it's about to go off. Friday night footy at Melbourne's Marvel Stadium and Stephanie Browett is right at home. Quainer from 35, it'll lift the roof on Marvel Stadium. Come on. <laughs> Just being here helps her feel close to her dad Paul and sister Crystal. They were killed two and a half years ago in New Zealand's White Island volcano disaster, which Steph incredibly survived. What does it represent being at the footy? It is very special for me. My dad grew up playing football and he goes for Carlton. <laughs> the enemy. Even though all the females in the house go for Collingwood and he tried very hard to get us to be Carlton supporters. But he made sure to take us to every Collingwood game he could, even if it meant he missed out on his Carlton games. And I just want to continue to enjoy it for him mm. and for my sister. These days, Steph comes with her lawyer, Peter Gordon, who used to run the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah. It's the first time she's been out in public without the compression face mask that's helped her skin recover from severe burns. What does it say? Oh, it says my name. Yeah. <laughs> A momentous occasion that some special guests have come to celebrate including former Collingwood president, Eddie Maguire. Hello! Steph! Oh, my God. Oh, God, you look so fantastic. Good to see. Oh, thank you, you look so absolutely much. sensational. You're looking amazing, aren't you? And AFL boss, Gil McLaughlin. I need to see you today looking so amazing. I think we're all <laughs> um, feeling proud of you and thrilled for you. So here's a toast to you for you. Uh, just being a courageous Australian and... Um, yeah, well done. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Cheers. We kind of started the tradition of uh, going to Western Bulldog Collingwood games uh, together. You know, it's a shame that Steph Barracks for Collingwood, but you've got to accept people as they are, Sarah. Come on, that's unfair. <laughs> Truth is a defence, <laughs> I think. But when it comes to litigation, Peter's commitment is no joke. Hi. He'll never forget receiving a phone call yeah, from well, Steph's mum, Marie, no, no, asking him to well. fight for their family no, in what's no, become a long and complex us. battle against multi-billion dollar cruise company Royal Caribbean. I remember sitting in my lounge room 
So I was kind of crying for some of it because it was just the most harrowing story. I mean, she lost her husband, Paul. She lost her daughter, Crystal. And she had to manage these horrific injuries to Stephanie. You weren't ever going to say no, were you, when Marie asked you to represent the family? No, I wasn't. But you didn't need to look too hard into this to realise that, you know, the real, the real tragedy in this, but also the real wrongdoing in this, was the gurus that run Royal Caribbean uh, in Miami and their decision to allow day tours to continue to that uh, island when it was clear for weeks before that it was a ticking time bomb. This vision from Crystal's phone will be used as evidence their tour guide knew danger was imminent. The higher the, um, the level, the more the steelers of an eruption. Level three is an eruption. Oh, really? So we're on a level two nearing level three now. Even um, more concerning is that the level two warning had been in place for two weeks, with New Zealand's Volcanic Monitoring Authority advising... White Island may be entering a period where eruptive activity is more likely than normal. But the cruise ship didn't pass that warning on to the Browards before sending them on a day trip to the active volcano. It makes me so mad that they expect passengers to know about that sort of uh, thing with no kind of background whatsoever when they've got an entire risk management department, um, you know, on the 50th floor of some downtown building in Miami that's meant to be monitoring those risks, completely ignoring their responsibilities. So, I'm sorry, but, you know, like, it makes me furious. They let down so many people and so many people died needlessly and, and, and suffered. I mean, I, I think Steph's injuries are the worst injuries I've ever seen. Her life will never be the same again, will it? No, it won't, but, you know, when you think about what she was like when she was first deposited in the Alfred Hospital with very little chance of survival and with some of the most horrific burns of all time and having lost half of her family and where she is today, you know, it's pretty heroic. So much of Steph's progress has been heroic, even the little things most of us take for granted. So this is exciting, Steph. Oh, it's, it's very exciting. You got your licence back. I have, and it feels really good. Yeah. <laughs> After two and a half years, she's back behind the wheel and going places. So I've now got a, a handle to use on the wheel so that I can turn the wheel more easily. How do you feel driving now? It's so nice. It's given me back my freedom and it means I don't have to rely on other people and I can just take control of my life again. It's a level of independence Steph never imagined she'd get back. I'm very proud of how far I've come. None of this journey has been easy. It's all been quite difficult. But then also seeing my mum hurt and grieve and suffer. That's also been hard because I know nothing I do or say can take her pain away. So everything about this has been difficult. What pushed you through? My mum. My mum has pushed me through from the very first day. Whilst my scars are physical and are visible, she has her own that aren't visible. But she's always made sure to put me first. And I just hope that my sister and dad can see me now and see what I've done, what I've had to go through, and that I did it. <laughs> Yeah, they'd be so proud of you, Steph. Yep. And I just hope they know that I made it back to my mum. And I wish all of us made it back to mum. Not just me, but I'm glad that someone did. As proud as Steph is of how far she's come, 
She still worries about facing the world without the bandages that have been hiding her scars. I know I've got the support of so many people and that helps me realise that this isn't as scary as I feel it is. What are you scared of? Broward's friends have been waiting two and a half years for this day. It's the first time they've seen Steph without the face mask she's worn since suffering life-threatening burns. It's how everyone should greet a friend who's achieved so much. So this is a big moment for Steph. It takes a lot of courage to take off that face mask. When she walked in, she was just so comfortable and natural. You just looked like you, like Steph. And yeah, beautiful. You guys have known Steph for years. Is this still the same Steph? As soon as you walk through that door and your smile, I'm like, it's Steph. Still the same beautiful person inside and out. Shuffle in, shuffle in. Come on, guys, get him. One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> I'm so grateful you could all be here today, that each one of you have been there for me in different ways. and. You're just all very special to me. Thank you. I love you all. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> Happy birthday to Steph. And today there is a lot to celebrate. It's also Steph's 26th birthday. Hooray! Hooray! It's milestones like this that motivated Steph to push through her painful recovery. I had a lot of days where I didn't think I could do it and even though some things may have taken longer than I had hoped for, I did do it. I did accomplish these goals. I'm very, I'm very happy with myself. <laughs> okay. Ooh, you did it. On top of the world with her closest friends, it's easy to forget how vulnerable Steph feels about showing the rest of the world her scars. Hey, there you go. Perfect. It's a very overwhelming moment just because I've been hidden, I guess, for so long. I'm equally as excited as I am scared. What are you scared of? I... I guess I'm just scared of being judged, just like most people would be. You know, there's always that concern about what people will think. And I like to remind myself and tell myself not to worry about what other people say, but, you know, it's still there, unfortunately. <laughs> You're just as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside, Steph. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and millions of people around the world agree, inspired by Steph's remarkable comeback on social media. How many followers have you got? One and a half million on TikTok. Wow. <laughs> I know, and a, nearly 100,000 on Instagram. Seriously, that's huge. huge. It is huge. Guys, I'm about to show you something. Steph shares so much of herself and gets so much back in return. I get a lot of people sharing their own stories and their own battles with their own personal issues. And if I can just make a difference in one person's life, that means everything to me. Notes from strangers remind Steph of her incredible achievements. You are so brave and you are a role model for everybody out there. And how exciting her future will be. You are so strong and you are literally a miracle and such a special, strong person. Never forget it. What are the goals you've set yourself now? I want to get back to working full time. I want to go back to a normal life, as normal as possible. <laughs> What does normal mean to you these days? Normal for me would be going back to my social life, possibly travelling. What's first on the list? 
I'd love to go to Greece. <laughs> my parents proposed in Santorini, so Greece is number one on my list. <laughs> It's a dream that at long last yeah. is within reach for okay. Steph. As she slowly shared the painful and restrictive yeah, compression yeah. garments that were necessary to help heal the burns affecting 70% of her body, removing the face mask signals the final step in a life she's now adjusting to. I think initially the hard part was just taking it off for the very first mm. time. And now that I've done that, it's becoming easier. Yeah especially seeing everyone else around me and how happy they are for me. Well, for you, this is it now. It is. No need to hide behind a mask. That's right. <laughs> no more hiding behind a mask. <laughs> a fresh start that can't come soon enough for Steph, according to her proud lawyer and now friend, Peter Gordon. More than most, he understands just how much she's been through and the challenges she'll face for the rest of her life. Anyone out there would look at the suffering that Steph has endured following the eruption for the past two and a half years, the ongoing treatment that she will need and go, she deserves nothing but the best care for the rest of her life. How heavily does that weigh on you, given that you are leading this case for her? Oh, extremely heavily. I've acted for a lot of people over the years, but you look at a young girl like Steph, the things that she's seen, the things that she's felt, I don't think I've... I don't think I've ever seen worse injuries. And I'll also say that I don't think I've ever met quite as exceptional a person as Stephanie in the way that she's battled on, supported her mum, you know, believed in her ability to come back, um, wanted to make her dad and her sister proud. She's a remarkable girl. You're really invested in Stephanie, aren't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> feel about the person looking back at you these days? When I look at myself and the scars on my body, on my face, I know they represent what I've been through and I shouldn't be ashamed. Nobody should be ashamed of their scars because it represents the battle and it represents my growth as a person to be where I am today. So I hope I can continue to learn to feel confident and comfortable in my skin because everyone should feel comfortable in their own skin, no matter what. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.